You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Days of Our Lives fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I have got a big fat list of 10 predictions for Days of Our Lives for 2024. Some of these are based on official spoilers. Some of these are based on storylines. Some of these are are based on conjecture and my knowledge of how Ron Carlovati writes soaps. I've been watching him write soaps for a long time. Way before he was on Days of Our Lives, they don't call him Rerun for nothing. If you know how he writes, you know the storylines you're going to see again and again. But I do like him as a writer a lot. He's created some of my favorite characters. So I'm excited to dig into these 10 predictions with you. If you haven't, though, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our Days of Our Lives updates. Now let's jump right in. My number one prediction is about Holly Jonas. I know a lot of people are probably concerned. She had that overdose. She is on a ventilator. She can't breathe on her own. They're saying she has very little brain activity. But my first prediction is that Holly survives, but her overdose is going to start a multifamily war in Salem. Nicole thinks that her baby died, so I just really don't see the soap killing off the only child she thinks she has. Plus, they went to a lot of trouble to get a good actress to play Holly and to get a good actor in playing Tate. So I think it's going to you know, be hit and miss, touch and go, but I do think Holly's going to ultimately survive. My number two prediction is that Tate is going to be attacked at Statesville Prison. Now, if you don't know this, the official spoilers say EJ is furious about Holly's overdose. He wants to blame Tate. He already said, my stepdaughter doesn't do drugs. Well, yes, she does, EJ, because she's messed up because her baby brother just died and her mom has been a parent in absentia, not paying enough attention to her daughter, who is herself grieving. They left her alone on her birthday. She missed Christmas. She was alone. They have not been parenting this teenager well. Teens have enough angst as it is, but... The neglect, I feel like that EJ and Nicole are engaging in with Holly, the emotional neglect is terrible. I mean, obviously she's not been neglected for food and shelter and things like that, but emotional neglect is a real thing. EJ is going to revoke Tate's bail and decide to charge him as an adult and ship him off to Statesville where he knows there are dangerous, bad, grown-up people. And Tate is a just a boy. He's a pretty boy, too. Not the kind of combo that you want in prison. And I feel very certain that Tate is going to be attacked in Statesville. And then I think Brady might attack EJ. And I don't feel bad for EJ because he has been a total twat since he has gotten the role of DA. If it was real life, and we all know it's not, it's a soap, he never would be allowed hands near a case like his sister-in-law, Gabby Hernandez, or this boy who was out on a date with his stepdaughter who overdosed. But it's Salem. It's not reality. My number three prediction is that Constantine Melionis, awful, creepy Constantine, may be able to activate the pawn. You guys know, or if you don't know, John Black, when he first came on, was all bandaged up in the face, and he was known as the pawn. He was this well-trained assassin, and he had been trained by the guy that he initially thought was his bio dad, but now it turns out it isn't because Dick Van Dyke's character Timothy is... And at any rate, Victor ended up in possession of the pawn as a pet assassin. And then Constantine just recognized his eyes the other day. Constantine knows something about this pawn situation. So I definitely feel like he might have some secret knowledge. Can you imagine if someone as horrible as Constantine had the ability to activate John and use him to do bad deeds that he wouldn't even remember? terrifying i just john capellos is such a good actor but gosh i hate constantine he just makes my skin crawl every time he's on screen which is a sign that the actor is doing a great job my number four prediction for days for next for this year is that xander and maggie are gonna rub it 
in Alex's face when it comes out that he is not Victor Kidiakis's biological son. It is not Alex's fault that Teresa Donovan, terrible Teresa, changed the will and said that he is Victor's son. I think Alex is going to be very upset about it. But since then, since Alex has gotten this money and power, he's been a real tool not only towards Xander and saying crap things to him, but also towards Maggie a whole lot. And even towards Justin, the man who right now, he may not think that's his biological father, but that's the father who's raised him all of his 30 some odd years. And he's being a creep to him. He has stopped calling him dad. He's calling him Justin like he's a stranger. So I feel like when the truth comes out, Justin's going to be very sympathetic, but I think Xander and Maggie are going to be more like, ha, that's what you get for being a total prat. So we'll see. I'm excited to, to see Alex crushed by this and to see if Rob Wilson, you know, if his acting chops are up to this material. I think they are. He's, he's good. Not just good looking, but a good actor. My fifth prediction is that Teresa Donovan is run out of town after the Alex reveal. And maybe she even takes Tate with her. I don't see how Teresa's presence in Salem is going to be sustainable once the truth comes out. The ugly truth of her messing with that will, basically ruining Justin's life, screwing over Xander, screwing with all the other Kittyakuses, screwing really with Victor. Kittyakis's memories, his legacy, everybody who cared about the the old grouch. So I just don't see how this is going to work out well for her. Alex is not going to want to talk to her again. A lot of people aren't. Xander might want her prosecuted for fraud. And if she and Brady, and I do think they will get closer between now and that reveal, I think Brady's going to turn on her too, because this is just typical Teresa behavior. My number six prediction is that Brady's going to fall off the wagon. I think this stuff going on with Tate is just going to be too much. I think he's going to have too much anger. I don't think he's going to go towards drugs, but maybe back to alcohol and he's going to need help. Hopefully Maggie will be there for him. So we'll see how that goes. But once Brady falls off the wagon, then that usually when he's weak, it's an opportunity for Kristen Demera to step back in. And I would love to see Stacey Heideck back as Kristen this year. And I would definitely love to see her back with Brady. My number seven prediction is that Johnny and Chanel get married. Paulina Price is is sick with the thyroid thing, possibly with cancer. And so this coming week, Johnny and Chanel make love for the first time in a long, long time. And I know he wants to remarry her. I do think they're going to get married. And I think they may rush it out even by like February sweeps or something if Paulina does indeed have cancer, just to make sure her mom is around for it. My number eight prediction, Lucas Horton's getting out of prison. It's overdue, right? And there's so much stuff going on with family. I don't know how long Lucas will stick around Salem after he gets out of prison, but it looks like he's going to be part of this drug storyline, the Clyde thing, the Bistro, the Ava, Harris, Stefan, all that, even into Holly's overdose. So we'll see how it goes. My number nine prediction, Clyde Weston is going to be dead, 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 because he's main, main, main. It is long overdue. As much as I love James Reed, he's such a silver fox. He's so bad, but he's so sexy. He needs to be six feet under. He needs to be pushing up daisies. He needs a dirt nap, all of those things. And I feel like, you remember EJ refused to help Stefan kill Clyde. And I think EJ, once he comes around and realizes that ultimately Clyde's drugs are what caused Holly's overdose, I think EJ might do a 180 and come back to Stefan and go, okay, yeah, let's kill this bastard. <laughs> That's what I think is going to happen. I think EJ is going to orchestrate it, which would be karmic since Clyde was the one who killed EJ when he was presumed dead for so long. My 10th and final prediction, I feel like Ava Vitale and Harris Michaels are going to leave town together. So Steve Burton signed a one-year deal with Days of Our Lives in October of 2022. So that contract would have expired in October of 2023. However, and listen before you say, but he's still on screen. Of course, he's still on screen. They spend, they film six to seven months ahead. 
So if they did not renew his contract past that one year, then that should put it around mid to late April when his last last scenes are, or even into May sweeps, depending on how far ahead they were shooting. I just, I don't know how long Ava and Harris are sustainable as characters. And we know that Days of Our Lives is a revolving door anyway. So I like them together, but probably because I liked the actors together when they were on General Hospital together. But for the characters, eh, I don't know. I feel like they're, that they're, they're both too new. I mean, she's been around for a while, but she hasn't had a plot. And he, you know, they pulled him out of the late 80s. It was his first, Steve Burton's first soap job uh, playing Harris back in high school when he used to torment Eve Donovan. So I just don't see them with staying power. And I predict they're going to leave town together, leave Salem together in 2024. But we'll see how it goes. Hey, if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. And that's it for my 2024 prediction. I hope you guys had a wonderful New Year's Eve, had great fun ringing in the new year. I saw fireworks on the beach, which was fantastic. After seeing the new Wonka movie and having a little bit of dinner with friends, it was a wonderful evening, a wonderful way to start 2024. And I hope you had your 2024 off to a wonderful start as well. And in 2024, just like in 2023, you can expect to see me here talking days of our lives with you seven days a week. And as always, this has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 